Get ready for a mind-bending question that will make you question your own existence. Well, maybe not to that extreme, but definitely a cognitive workout. You are presented with the very simple expression. 5 minus 2 multiplied by 4 plus 7 equals question mark. And question mark is the value that you need to calculate. Once calculated, select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 3. Choice B, 4. Choice C, 5. And last but not least, choice D, 6. I'm going to give you a hint. Make sure to verify your answer before you move forward. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this brain teaser together. And remember, if you end up calculating a better way to solve it, please share your answer in comments. The key to solve this challenge is to determine the order of operations. You might have heard the term PEMDAS, which stands for parents' brackets, exponents, orders, multiplications, divisions, addition and subtraction, which is also known as BAMDAS and represents correct way to perform calculations. Let's apply this order to this expression. We first need to do multiplication. 2 multiplied by 4 equals 8. So the updated expression will be 5 minus 8 plus 7. The next operation is from left to right we need to do subtraction. 5 minus 8 equals minus 3. Next step, minus 3 plus 7 equals 4. So the tip here is always remember to follow the order of operation to get the accurate result in mathematical calculations. The correct answer here is choice B, 4. Prepare to tackle this intriguing assessment test question, designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to foster your analytical skills, which you can use in the day-to-day -day life. You need to determine the missing number, which is located on the top of the pyramid. The other numbers in the pyramid are 8 and 28 in the second row, 4, 4 and 7 in the third row, and 3, 1, 4 and 3 in the fourth row. You need to calculate the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 26. Choice B, 30. Choice C, 32. And last but not least, choice D, 36. Let me give you a hint. Consider that I might be trying to mislead you by the way I present the information. Maybe there is another alternative look and how you can look at this data. Are you ready? I think I found my answer and I am thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine our strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember how I presented the information to you? I started from the top and went to the bottom. But in fact, you need to start from the low level numbers and apply math operations to the low line numbers to calculate the higher level numbers. To confuse you even more, there are two math operations are alternating in the calculations, addition and multiplication. Let's look at the example so you get better understanding. Let's look at the numbers in the bottom left corner. 3 plus 1 equals 4. But 1 multiplied by 4 equals 4. Remember I told you that addition and multiplication are alternating. So the next one would be addition again. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Let's go to the row 2. 4 plus 4 equals 8. But 4 multiplied by 7 equals 28. So to calculate the top number, we need to add 8 and 28 to get to the final result of this, 36. So the correct answer here is choice D, 36. I love this thought-provoking assessment test question. In addition to boosting your reasoning skills, solving it improves your analytical skills as well as attention to details. You're presented with 3 by 3 matrix. The matrix has numbers 5, 2, 14, 3, 3, and 15, 2, 4, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 19. And last but not least, choice D, 20. Take a close look and rationalize to see if you can come up with the answer. I think I am getting closer to the solution. The key, I believe, is to look at the colors flow. Don't you think so? With this hint, give yourself a little bit more time to see if you can figure it out. 
But now that I found my solution, let's explore the problem-solving approach together. I am eager to break it down step by step for you. And as usual, if you have any unique insights, feel free to contribute in comments. I think the pattern here is that the rightmost value in each row is calculated as double of the first column's value and square of the second column numbers. Let's look at the example. For example, for the first row, the calculations might be 5 multiplied by 2 plus 2 squared, which would be equal 10 plus 4, and end result of this would be 14. For the second row, the calculations will be 3 multiplied by 2 plus 3 squared, which would be equal 6 plus 9, and end result of this would be 15. So for the missing value, the calculations will be 2 multiplied by 2 plus 4 squared, which would be equal 4 plus 16, and the end result of this would be 20. Remember the hint I gave you? The flow of colors here shows the flow of the calculations. For example, 2 and 2 are initial numbers, and 14 is the calculated number in the first row. So, the correct answer here is choice D, 20. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. What's interesting about this problem is that it seems unsolvable, but if you make one correct assumption, it's so easy to solve it. You're presented with the shelf of items from the coffee shop, and the items are cupcakes and cookies. There are three sets of items, and two sets have price tags associated with them, and the last set does not, and you need to calculate the price tag for the last set. The first set consists of one cookie and one cupcake, and the price tag for the first set is $7. The second set consists of two cookies and one cupcake, and the price tag for the second set is $12. The last set consists of only one cupcake, and you need to calculate and select price for the cupcake out of four possible choices. Choice A, $5. Choice B, $4. Choice C, $2. And last but not least, choice D, $3. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? It seems unsolvable, but the only thing you need to make is one assumption. And using this assumption, I'm going to move forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Take a close look at the first set. The first set consists of cookie and cupcake, and it costs $7. What's interesting is that the second set already includes the first set, plus the cookie, which allows us to calculate the price of this extra cookie. And we can do it by subtracting 7 from 12, and the end result of it is $5, which means that the price of cookie is $5. Now we can easily calculate the price of cupcake by subtracting 5 from 7, which means that the total price of cupcake is 2. So the correct answer here is choice C, $2. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer, solution, and rationale in comments. Here is the challenging problem by solving which you will boost your cognitive abilities. You're presented with five hints, and using these hints, you need to unlock the code and open the lock. The hints are, in the digits 248, only one digit is correct and well placed. In the digits 845, two digits are correct but not correctly placed. In the digits 461, only one digit is correct, and it is correctly placed. In the digits 592, only one digit is correct, and it is well placed. And last but not least, hint that in the digits 904, none of the digits are correct. To open the lock, you need to process all the hints and select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, 518. Choice B, 485. Choice C, 418. And last but not least, choice D, 568. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I'm pretty sure you're done solving it by now, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer and solution. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, you solve this problem through elimination. And I'm going to start with the hint number 5, because it's the most helpful of all. Once we've learned that in combination 904 none of the digits are correct, we can eliminate two possible answers. We can eliminate both choices B and C, because both of them have digit 4, which is an incorrect digit. Let's continue elimination to get to the correct answer. If we look through the remaining four hints, we learn that in hint 1, 
where digits are 2, 4, 8, only one digit is correctly placed, which is digit 8. In hint 2, two digits are correct, but they are not correctly placed, and they are digits 8 and 5. In hint 3, only one digit 6 is correct, and it is correctly placed. And last but not least, in hint 4, digit 5 is correct, and it is well placed. Based on this, the correct answer here is choice D, 568. Do you have any hints to show how to best solve these types of challenges? If you do, please make sure to post them in comments. Here's a very interesting problem which shows how well you can do mental calculations. It will take another 5 minutes for the clock to strike 4 o'clock. How much time is left until the clock shows a quarter to 4? You're presented with two clocks. One shows 5 minutes before 4 o'clock. Second one shows quarter to four, and you need to select the answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 11 hours and 50 minutes. Choice B, 12 hours and 10 minutes. Choice C, 11 hours and 10 minutes. And last but not least, choice D, 10 minutes. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if for whatever reason you think the answer should be different, please make sure to post your answer, solution and rationale in comments. Let's first determine how much time is actually on the clock. Based on the description, it will take another 5 minutes for the clock to strike 4 o'clock, which means that the clock now shows 3.55. Our next described point on the clock will be quarter to 4, which could be represented as 15.45 and clock will reach this point after around 12 hours to show 3.45 again. In the military time, which is frequently used in US, it's going to be 15.45, and it's going to be a little bit less than 15.55. Let's determine how much less than 12 hours it's going to be. Since the clock already passed 10 minutes from 3.45 to 3.55, it will take 10 minutes less than full 12 hours. This is why we can subtract 10 minutes from 12 hours to get to the answer of 11 hours and 50 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice A, 11 hours and 50 minutes. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Here's the very interesting question, which is frequently used to test your analytical reasoning and spatial reasoning. You're presented with the set of objects and you need to find the missing item. The set of objects consists of three rows. In the first row, you see the pigeon, arrow, and then the pigeon again. In the second row, you see the flower, arrow, and then the flower again. Then in the third row, you see the car, the arrow, and then comes the missing item. You need to select the missing item out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. If you can't figure it out, consider pausing this video to see if you can get to the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version and my rationale for the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, or if you have a better explanation, please make sure to post in comments. The actual answer to the question is very simple, but the question was designed to confuse you. The objects that you see on the left of the arrow and on the right of the arrow are reflections of each other. What's interesting here is that the objects are mirror images reflected either horizontally or vertically. You determine the axis of reflection based not on the direction of the arrow, but based on the direction which is rotated 90 degrees to the direction actually shown. Let's look at the actual example. Because the direction of the first arrow in the first row goes from top to bottom, the pigeon actually is reflected horizontally, not vertically. And to get to the correct answer, you need to rotate the pigeon 180 degrees. Let's look at the second object. We see the flowers with the yellow flower being on the left. And once we do the conversion, basically vertical reflection, because the arrow goes from left to right, we see that the yellow flower is now on the right. So the pattern here is that the arrow points to perpendicular direction of the actual reflection. For example, vertical direction of the arrow results in horizontal reflection and vice versa. Let's look at the third row to get to the correct answer. Because arrow goes from top to bottom, we need to use horizontal reflection. Which means that the correct answer here is choice A. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. 
Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.